What happens if a person is being attacked? If you are attacked, what you're supposed to do? Let me ask you, what you're supposed to do? Yeah. Help them. Help the person who's being attacked. But what's the responsibility of the person himself? If I'm being a attacked, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. To defend yourself. Exactly, to defend yourself. Defensive jihad means to defend yourself if, you, if you're being attacked. However, you are not allowed to kill the attacker, are you? Defensive jihad means to defend yourself against evil. And that does not necessarily mean using force. It can mean speaking against it. It can mean writing against it. It can mean bringing a collective uh, initiative against it. So for instance, if some people are doing something bad in the society, you're not allowed to go and beat them up and say, well, I'm defending the society. What you're allowed to do is possibly to highlight this problem. Okay, very quick answers. Number one, does defensive jihad mean that a law-abiding Muslim may defend himself if attacked? Back table. We did discuss that. Say someone like shot you in the arm, it doesn't mean that you go hunting for them and shoot them back. It's obviously like common sense. You have to understand a certain way. And it's kind of like the same with everyone, really. If someone attacks you, you're obviously going to defend yourself. It's not just Muslims, it's just people in general. Good. Good. So basically, you, we, we agree on the, prin the principle that if someone attacks us, we got to defend ourselves. But how do we do that? This is where we, we will have to, to speak about individual situations, isn't it? Right. Okay. We're going to go on to uh, number two now, which is, does defensive jihad mean you have the right to kill your attacker? It doesn't really, unless uh, they do something very seriously wrong against you. So say they killed your child, um, which would be very difficult to ignore. You'd want to get some kind of revenge. Um, however, it would be better to go for the legal system. Uh, so they, have, they suffer for a while, I guess, in jail. Well, I will agree that if someone has killed someone, then the punishment has to be there. There has to be a punishment for that. But if we allow the person to go and kill, uh, uh, to take revenge by killing the other person, then it will be completely uncontrollable. So since there is a government in place, the government has to look after this. The legal system has to look after that. And then if we go on to number three then, does defensive jihad permit you to kill others who may support your attacker? Where do we go with that one? Because this is the vicious circle, isn't it? They kill someone that you know, we want to get back at them, and they are supporting them, so here it goes. In one big circle which never stops. Uh, we, we don't think that uh, they, uh, c uh, they should kill uh, the people who are supporting your attackers because uh, uh, a, jihad, uh, a defensive jihad says you can't kill. Uh, your people, and because there's a government in place, you'd have to go for the legal assist uh, system for uh, uh, assisted assault or something like that. And if you cannot kill your attacker, then by default you cannot kill those who support them, because you don't know what level of support have they given, and it, they will, will be opening the door again for chaos. So if someone killed your child, say, what would you do, like, personally, what would you do? I, I will go and get... First of all, I will go and, and file a, a case against this individual. I'll let the police t do their investigation, and then I'll let the legal system take its flow. Whatever the, 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 the court decide against that individual, then that, that will be it, isn't it? If your emotion said one thing, what would prevent you from actually taking action directly? The first type of jihad. Jihad uh, struggling against one's temptation. You see, sometimes your emotions make you very aggressive. And you know, this is where devil, I believe, plays tricks. He plays on our emotions because there is no control for emotions and there is no limit for emotions. We are composed of emotions and mind, ideas. What does the mind do? It, I wouldn't say cripples the emotions, but channels them properly. So sometimes I could be wrong in my emotions. I could be driven by... Uh, by these emotions to revenge and then at the end I discover that I was wrong.